the modern man we are playing Hogak Vine once again and this time we are running up against Tron this is our opening hand it's actually not great there's a I mean basically we want to discard all of these cards um, we do have stitches supply which is hard to turn down I think I end up keeping this hand but I, in hindsight maybe this should have been a mulligan it's kind of one of those hands that could go insane depending on what we mill with stitches supply but we don't have any way to sacrifice it uh, and Basically, we can't cast any of the cards in our hand otherwise, um, so, and we really want them in the graveyard, so, I mean, I suppose Hogak doesn't really matter, but Venturines wants to be in the graveyard, we, can't, we haven't got any way of casting them, um, and then Bridge definitely wants to be in the graveyard because it doesn't do anything otherwise. So, yeah, uh, we draw a land, we get to mill into a Faithless Looting, so that's not too bad. So we might be getting off to a bit of a slow start, but this is looting will be able to allow us to dump uh, some of these cards that we don't really want into our graveyard. Draw Hogak, which is another pretty bad draw. Watch our opponent isn't uh, doing anything too crazy. They didn't have a uh, turn to a second uh, Tron land to go with this expedition map, so it'll be at least turn four before Tron comes down. As it stands, put maps and finds. Tron piece, presumably, there's this tower. Tower comes down, put my sphere, cracks that into Sylvan Scrying, which is going to find the mine that they need. Yep, um, and then we draw another land, so we haven't really done particularly well here so far. Um, so we're going to have to flashback this Faithless looting as we planned. Um, I'm going to pitch the bridge from below in the Venge Vine. Um, I, th I think, yeah, I mean, we can't really afford to pitch two Venge Vines on the basis of hopefully getting a, another creature to cast. Um, and also, bridge from below works nicely with the uh, Carrion Feeder and the Stitches Supplier, so we can actually get another black creature into play to cast Hogak off, even if I sack the, uh, the Stitches Supplier. So attack for one here, put them down to 18. Hope our opponent doesn't do anything too crazy with their Tron mana. So they have Khan, Sack Sanctum of Ugin, go find uh, Walking Blister. Uh, Walking Blister is quite useful for them. Uh, they can, well, it can kill itself, so it can exile bridges basically. Uh, and also, we've also got various like one toughness guys. So. Walking Ballista can do quite a lot against us, potentially. But yeah, um, and then our opponent exiles the Black Cleave Cliffs. I think, looking at it, they were probably better off exiling the Stitches Supplier. Like, we don't really care about our lands all that much, um, and the Stitches supply is potentially quite a lot of gas for us. Uh, and I believe it turns out to be Drop Blood Guest, which is nice. Um, I mean, even on a sort of basic level we can play Carrion Feeder and Blood Guest get back this Venge Vine but hopefully we can do slightly more than that so uh, oh, we should be able to cast Hogak as well so uh, we're going to sack Stitch of Supply see if we can get some more gas um, we're going to get Venge Vine back so we do we want to kill this Khan before the end of the turn most likely but we're going to use Venge Vine for that and uh, so sacking the Stitch of Supply that could have attacked is uh, is probably not going to cost us, uh, which, or it shouldn't cost us. So sack that. Um, we find another bridge from below, so that's very nice for us. Um, we can do various things here, but I think the best play is just to get the blood gas into play, get the venge vine back. and then uh, pass the turn. We could have played Altar, I suppose, instead, uh, but we leave our opponent with a Khan, which doesn't seem great, and then... Um, oh, I don't know, actually. I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I suppose we could have altered, cast Hogak, and then tried to mill our opponent out instead. So it's hard to have both options. I think this is a bit safer. Um, particularly with our opponent being Tron, there is the possibility 
I mean, it's, I don't think it's in the standard Tron list, but I don't know if they've adapted at all, but there is the possibility their opponent has, like, an Emrakul or something in their deck, which would just shuffle their deck back, which would make the mill strategy a little bit uh, useless. Or not entirely uh, not entirely good. So we're going to just uh, cast our Hogak and pass the turn. But yeah, as I say, we could have potentially been a bit more greedy and uh, cast Alter of Dementia there and seen if we could just so go uh, go wild with the milling, particularly with two bridge from the blow. Uh, we might have just been able to win the game there. Oh, there's Worm Coil Engine, which I don't think we care about, to be quite honest. Um, we have Carrion Feeder, which can sack anything that Worm Coil blocks, and therefore they never get the lifelink uh, gain. So, it's not really a concern, even if we were just looking to attack and kill our opponent, but I think as it stands, we're more likely to just combo kill them. So, I decided to attack first. I I don't know whether that's right or wrong, to be honest. I mean, it we, means we get to attack with Hogak, which is always nice, um, although inevitably our opponent is going to block that. Uh, we could have started milling ourselves first and seen if we hit more, like, Blood Guests and uh, Venge Vines and things and done a lot of extra stuff that um, potentially could have got more power on the board and uh, made a bigger attack. So, opponent blocks the Hogak. Just going to sack it to the altar and mill ourselves for eight. Um, and let opponent to go down to 10. But yeah, I don't think... I mean, none of that was particularly necessary, to be honest. I suppose we probably could have just started by milling ourselves. So, we're going to recast Hogak. Exiling a few cards from our graveyard. Mill ourselves for 8 again. With the Hogak, which generates two zombies. Uh, we haven't found... Oh yeah, we found the third bridge from below now. Uh, which should make this a fairly easy job. Uh, we also get a Vengevine back there because this is the second time we've cast Hogak this turn. So now we're getting three zombies every time we sack Hogak. Down to 15 cards in our library. That's Hogak again. We're gonna mill ourselves down to three cards in the deck. Um, I don't think we found the fourth bridge. No, so the fourth bridge is, uh, is, is still in the deck somewhere. Um, we could mill ourselves further, but I don't think it's necessary. I think we've still got more than enough power on board, um, and we certainly wouldn't want to get somehow accidentally... Well, we wouldn't really want to go down to lower than one card in our great, in our uh, library. Um, oh, there's seven cards in the library, sorry. Um, so yeah, we could mill ourselves further. We don't want to accidentally get milled out. As I say, there is a possibility that our opponent has like an Emrakul or something which means that we can't really mill them out properly. But we will soon find out. So keep stacking Hogak, stuck stacking the zombies to start milling our opponent. Uh, obviously the nice part about this is that we also get to see a decent amount of, part, a decent amount of our opponent's deck. So we can often see uh, things that they've sideboarded in and things. I mean, this is game one, so... Uh, but yeah, we can just see the general configuration of their deck if we let if they let us mill them out, um, and uh, that's useful information that you can take into the to the next game uh, when, while you're milling your opponent out. So yeah, so that was a nice win for us. It was a bit of a slow start, but eventually we uh, we got the combo together um, and the early double bridge into the graveyard was uh, very handy. We might have been able to kill a little bit quicker, as I say. I um, I didn't really feel confident about it, but um, yeah, I think we probably could have got there with uh, the altar over the blood gas on that, uh, the earlier turn, but we made it, and uh, yeah, our opponent uh, concedes to the, to the milling. Okay, so here we are with sideboarding against Tron. Um, so Tron... It's basically Artifact Hate is the prime candidate. So we've got Wear and Tear, we've got Shenanigans. There's nothing we really need to kill on their end of things. Leyline doesn't really do anything. Wismer certainly doesn't. Silent Gravestone. I don't know if Surgical, I don't think is a popular option in 
in Tron, so I don't think we really need that. So, yeah, I think it's just bringing in the three artifact uh, hate cards here, and uh, I guess we're probably just cutting on some of our one drops, maybe a Vengevine. Uh, and we can certainly cut this, uh, cut this ley line as well because it's not doing anything in this particular matchup. So, yeah, fairly straightforward uh, sideboarding. Okay, so here we are with game two. This is our opening hand. Uh, it's not terribly good. It doesn't have a wear tear, um, but I just don't think that's awfully good. I mean, it's useful against a deck that we think is going to have Leyline of the Void, but I'm fairly confident Tron lists aren't running Leyline for the most part. So this hand is otherwise pretty slow. We can cast some Blood Guests, and that's really about it. So uh, this isn't a keeper from my liking. Um, this is a little bit better, we've got Neonate, so we can get Bridge back from below into the graveyard. Karen Feeder works nicely with that as well. And then we've got Blood Guest. So not an insane hand, but hopefully Neonate might dig us a little bit deeper. And uh, yeah, we just then really want ways to sort of mill ourselves, I suppose. But yeah, I don't can't see ourselves going to five over this hand. Uh, our score shows a marsh flats, we don't really want that. That leaves a power plant, which is fine. Uh, we draw Grave Crawler, which is okay, but I think our priority is probably going to be try and get this uh, bridge into the graveyard, and hopefully draw a little bit deeper into our deck, and then Carrion Feeder plus Grave Crawler plus Bridge from below is a decent way to get a nice bit of power onto the uh, battlefield. Pump plays Forest, which is nice for us in the, the uh, means that they are not going to have an early Tron. Or at least nothing turn before turn four. Uh, they reveal power plant off ancient stirrings, which is quite interesting because they already have a power plant in play. So obviously they've kind of whiffed on that. Uh, but then they do have this relic, which uh, might cause us some bother. I mean, we still got. I mean, as it stands, this hand is fairly good for uh, just general beats through a relic. So I guess we'll see how we go. But yeah, we're just going to keep this Neonate around for now, and I guess we'll, we'll attack with it. So, attack for one here. Uh, nobly, our opponent actually can't... Um, they can't exile the uh, exile the graveyards at the moment, because they didn't leave any mana up. So, there actually is a, like, a window of opportunity here, so we can get some value out of our graveyard while our opponent doesn't have the mana up. So I decided to attack first, because um, we might as well get the damage in. Sack bridge from below. I'm also going to play this polluted delta out, um, so that if our opponent activates the relic tap ability, we can uh, we can sack the polluted delta. I suppose that wasn't generally relevant uh, because we have the neonate in the graveyard as well. But as it turns out, it does work out to be well, the right play, or the functionally <laughs> proper play, um, because our opponent has a Surgical, which they're going to use on the on oh, Neonate. I'm kind of surprised they target the Neonate over the bridge from below, but there you go. So our, uh, our Neonates get exiled. Our opponent activates the Relic to try and get rid of the bridge, but we are going to use our Polluted Delta and just exile the Delta instead. We get our zombie token from the Neonate. We play Carrion Feeder and a Grave Crawler. And there isn't really any point in doing much more. I mean, I suppose we could sack the Grave Crawler to get a zombie token rather than a Grave Crawler, but I don't think there's any urgency in doing that. I guess we'll see what our opponent does. Opponent plays Expedition Map and plays the second power plant, so. As we suspected, they're not in a really good position in terms of uh, in terms of getting Tron together. So opponent activates relic. I just exile the bridge from below. I don't know if there's. I suppose probably we should have just sacked the grave crawler and exiled the grave crawler instead, potentially, because then we would have got a two-two token and lost the grave crawler. Seems kind of even, but I suppose we would have protected our bridge from below, which would have been better. So yeah, I think in hindsight we probably should have sat the Gravecrawler, because then we could have 
use our blood guest and potentially get some more activations out of the bridge. Draw Hogak, which we're kind of quite away from uh, being able to cast thanks to this relic, unfortunately. We're going to get to attack for 5 here, put our opponent down to 12. Just going to cast this blood guest. Put the uh, upload stain Mire into play and just pass the turn. Put Clack Cracks the map on their own turn to get tower. And yeah, things are going a little bit slowly for them, but they do still have Relic up. Um, but we have uh, a fairly reasonable sized series of threats. So I'm going to be able to attack for uh, four, five, six, seven here. So put, we do have lethal on board. We draw Revengevine, which isn't great. But yeah, we are pressuring our opponent. Uh, opponent plays Power Plant and then concedes. So yeah, if, I mean, like you say, uh, in here, sometimes you don't have to do anything too crazy to win um, when our opponent's just not putting any pressure on the board. Uh, they just didn't get Tron together, and then essentially they just had a relic, which was preventing us from doing anything too crazy, but then we just used our sort of regular one-mana beaters, and that was actually enough to get the job done. So, yeah, not the, like the least crazy um, way to win from this deck, I guess, but actually fairly effective in this situation.